homage, and it was the production value was amazing. So you obviously take this fun, whimsical approach to winemaking, and I'm wondering, you know, what boundaries are you trying to break or misperceptions? Well, there's no boundaries to break. We're just having a fantastic time making wine, and it's very true. I started to make this wine number 69, which is a bubble from Burgundy, Méthode Champenoise, a Crémant de Bourgogne, and everybody loves it, so they started to call me Agent 69. So I thought, what about doing an Agent 69 video in tribute to this? And as we acquire wineries which are very unique, full of heritage and history like Buena Vista, the latest, it was really fun to create a little plot and I'm the one saving the secret and the purple gold of Buena Vista, which is the red wine. I love it. So we have a blast. You know, we love to play. We think the wines we make are very serious, obviously very high profile, but we have to have fun because life is a small journey and we might as well have a great time. Right, right. And it seems more and more like the rule of wine drinking is there are no rules. That's so are right. you trying to break, break boundaries? And well, number three, the JCB number three, we just tried together and, and I right. saw you, you were enjoying it. He's really breaking the rules, but who said that two worlds together should not be blended and create something even greater than the parts? So we think it's important to experiment. In life, if you don't experiment, you don't progress. And if you don't progress, you recess. So we think going forward always, it's not always conclusive. When we created number three, I nearly gave up many, many times, but there was a voice in the back of me who said, Jean Charles, you've got to persevere, you've got to keep trying, and I was surrounded with an amazing team, Brian Maloney here in California and Gregory Patria in France, who said, let's keep doing it, we've got to create the wine which is better than the parts, and we did. And each of your collections seems to have these three kind of uncommon words to describe them, like incorrigible That's and right. mysterious, and I love that. So do you have three Table words? Nairs, always yes. three what words. What are your favorite three words to describe the art of wine making? Flamboyant, yes. majestuous, and debonair. Yes, I love it. Those are three words I love, but the beauty of it is we need to make wine, even though wine could be luxurious, wine could be expensive, wine could be unique, we need to make it accessible. And as I said today in our seminar here in Dustin, it's important that people describe wines the way they feel about it. It's their intimate relationship with that bottle of wine. It's not me to tell you them how they should feel. It's them to feel and to speak about what they feel. And that's very important. We need to really turn around the table. I'm not a professor, I'm not an expert. As a matter of fact, an expert is someone who knows how to be wrong with authority. <laughs> so if I show authority, you're gonna think I'm an expert. Yes. I've only tried a lot of wine because I started making wine when I was Young two years old. Right. So that's the beauty of it. But the more I taste, the less I know. So wine is a very humbling experience and that's what keeps me in it is to constantly discover something new.